In this video, I'll show you how to use OKX's Smart Arbitrage Trading Bot. This carries out a fairly common strategy in crypto, which aims to earn a yield out of our trade with almost no price exposure. So that means that the assets that we're trading here, if the price goes up or down, it shouldn't affect us at all. We're just earning the yield out of the trade that we're doing. I'll show you exactly what this is and how it works and how to carry it out on OKX. But if you have an OKX account, go to Trade, go to Trading Bots here, Marketplace, takes you through to this main page, then you want Smart Arbitrage. If you don't have an OKX account yet, I'll leave a link below. They give a bonus for new users, so if you click that link, you can see all of the details. I'll leave some other exchange links down below as well for the exchanges I use. Some of them also have this type of bot. That takes you through to the trading page. Yours may look a little bit different. If you go to the top right settings right here, then go th uh, through to interface, you can change the layout. I've just got advanced right for the layout here. Now what you want to do is uh, go to the bots. If you click Smart Arbitrage, it should take you through. But on the trading screen, you can also get there through the tools icon. So tools, and then it says trading bots here. Trading bots, click that. Then you can see all of these different ones. We want Smart Arbitrage. So that's how you get through to Smart Arbitrage. And it's going to give you the different assets that you can trade with this strategy and the different yields that have been gained from trading this strategy over certain time periods, three days, 30 days, 90 days. We can also choose different assets here, as you can see, and there are different yields that you can get. So all of these yields change and the assets that you can trade also change. It shouldn't matter which assets that you're trading because this strategy uh, should have zero price exposure. So if you're trading Bitcoin or Solana or Ethereum or anything else, it shouldn't matter. The price going up or down shouldn't matter. It just matters what the funding rate is and what the yield is that we can get out of this asset. So what exactly are we doing here? The Smart Arbitrage Trading Bot is carrying out a very common strategy in crypto, which is known as Spot Futures Arbitrage. So I'll explain it right here. In financial markets, and definitely in crypto, there are derivatives markets, which means that you can trade the price of assets without actually trading the asset itself. Now there's the spot market as well, which is where you cash settle trades. So if I want to buy Bitcoin with cash, I send USDT to someone or USD to someone, they send me Bitcoin, we exchange immediately and the, and the ownership of those assets is exchanged. In the futures markets, what you can do is simply trade with other people the price of the asset. So you don't trade the asset at all, you're just trading the price of the asset. Now in crypto, the futures market has something called a funding fee. Now this funding fee is the yield that we're trying to get from this trade. If we can earn the funding fee, that means we earn a certain amount, let's just call it 5% for an example. And so we can earn that funding fee if we carry out this trade, which is known as a delta neutral trade. Delta neutral meaning that what we wanna do is gain exposure to get the funding fee, but we don't want any price exposure to the asset. So what we do, is we go to the, the spot market, and this is what the bot does automatically for us. We just say, hey, I wanna invest X amount of dollars. Can you carry out this trade for me automatically? So that's what it does. So we go to the spot market, and let's say we buy one unit of ETH or any other asset. Now we're long ETH, which is not good because we have price exposure. So what we have to do is go to the futures market, and we can take a short position in one ETH. That's basically like selling. Now, we're not actually selling the asset, we're just trading the price of the asset. And in futures, you can take a short position, meaning that it's like selling, but you actually benefit when the price goes down. And if the price goes up, then you obviously lose because you'd have to buy back higher to close out the trade. But in any case, what we're doing here is taking a long position of one, one unit and a short position of one unit. So a long one and short one. That means if the price goes up, the long wins and the short loses. If the price goes down, the long loses and the short wins, which if we're, del if we're delta neutral, meaning we're perfectly hedged either side, then it doesn't matter what happens to the price. We will never win or lose any money. We're delta neutral, right? So there will be no change. Now, that's obviously completely pointless unless you're getting the funding fee. And that is the yield from this strategy. The funding rate is something that is paid in the futures market in crypto. Most of the time in crypto, especially for the larger assets and assets that are going up in price, the funding fee 
is usually paid to shorts and we are short in the future. So longs, the other side of our trade, will be paying a fee to shorts known as a funding fee and that is what we're creaming off from this trade. Now that could be 1%, it could be 3%, it could be 5% or it could be way more. Whatever that funding fee is, that's what we're creaming off. So we have a delta neutral trade, meaning that price exposure is basically zero. But whatever the funding fee is on the short side, that is what we're hoping to gain out of this strategy. Nothing is ever risk free though. We have exposure to the funding rate, which in crypto, like I said, is usually positive, which is good for us because we're short, which means that we get paid that funding. However, it can sometimes be negative as well, which means that if we're short, we have to pay that funding. This is how funding works. This is the spot price right here. And the futures price in the futures market can fluctuate up and down above or below the actual price of the, the underlying spot uh, market. If the price in the futures market is above the spot price, that's known as positive funding. That means that buyers are coming into the futures market and pushing the futures price up higher than the spot price. That's not good because the futures price has to match the spot price one for one, otherwise the market doesn't work, right? Because it's supposed to match the underlying assets. So if the futures price is too high, those people that are coming in long buying that price have to pay that funding fee to short sellers, which is us. So if we have positive funding, that's good for us because we have that short side of the futures trade. They pay us that fee. However, if the futures price is actually underneath the spot price, so there's many sellers coming in shorting the price, that's known as negative funding because the exchange is going to punish shorts for bringing the futures price below the spot price. And so that's known as negative funding because short sellers have to pay that fee to uh, longs. This fee is trying to incentivize the futures price to be absolutely in line with the spot price, right? So as long as futures is positive, the price is above the spot price, that's positive funding. We earn that as a short seller, we're good. However, if the price is down here, then we have to pay that out. Now funding is usually exchanged every few hours on crypto exchanges. So as long as overall you're in a positive funding environment, that's fine you're going to be earning the funding fee most of the time. Maybe on a couple of occasions you have to pay out the fee. That doesn't matter because you're gonna be in this trade for a while and hopefully overall the funding rate is mostly positive. Now in most of the large assets, funding is mostly positive and certainly in bull markets, funding is mostly positive because you have buyers coming in pushes, uh, pushing prices higher. There's another element to this trade that can also increase the yield that we're earning. Now for proof of stake assets like Ethereum and Solana and many others, so you can go and go to the Smart Arbitrage Trading Bot here, click the asset itself. You can scroll down the list of certain assets that are proof of stake. Ethereum is proof of stake, Solana and so on. They pay staking rewards to the token. Staking rewards are basically the fees of the blockchain. Some of those fees are returned to token holders, right? And so you earn that if you're long the asset. Well, we are long the asset, right? because we have a long position in the spot market. So the short side is earning the funding rate and the long side can earn the staking rewards. Staking rewards can change, but let's say the staking reward is 3% and the funding rate is 3%, then that means we're getting 6% annualized in a delta neutral strategy where the price moving up or down doesn't matter. So. It actually doesn't matter whether the asset that you're trading is proof of stake or not. It matters what the total expected yield is of the asset. But if you have a staking asset, then that means that you've just got that extra side that could boost the yield. Again, it doesn't matter which asset that we're trading because we don't have price exposure, or at least we shouldn't. We're just trading the assets that have the highest yield and mix of long spots, any staking rewards, and short funding, any funding rates over time. Now I'll show you how to carry out the trade on OKX. So what we want to do is find an asset that we can actually go into. Now, if we go to the 90 days performance, you'll see that there are assets that actually have negative performance here. That's because the funding is negative. And because we have a short trade in the futures market, that negative funding is actually being paid out and we're paying that out. So this is not a risk-free trade. There's the risk in the funding rate. And if you have to pay that out, then you actually get make a negative in the trade. So that's not good. Also, if you're looking at very volatile tokens that have very high APYs short term, 
that's great short term, but that may flip short term as well, because that's a very volatile price where the funding could go positive and negative. So you may get positive for a while and that may flip negative. You can get in and out of this trade very quickly as well. You can get into one and out of one, but you may just want to go for a funding rate or a yield that is less, but slightly more reliable over time. That's up to the individual. We're gonna choose Sol as an example here because you get the staking rewards and also the uh, arbitrage from the funding uh, funding rate as well. So you can see exactly what's happening here. We're selling the perpetual future Sol USDT and we're buying Sol USDT in the spot market. You can see the prices that we're trading at are almost exactly the same. That's the delta neutral, right? Short and long, exactly the same price. It doesn't matter where the price moves. You can see the estimated APY is around 12%. The arbitrage that we're making is around 2% and the staking APY from Sol is around 10%. You can see the back-tested annualized return here. The countdown is the countdown to the next funding rate. In the futures market, the funding rate is exchanged every few hours. So every few hours, as long as the funding is positive, we should be earning that on the short side of our futures trade. If the funding is negative, we have to pay that out. Now down here, you can just choose how much that you can actually invest in the asset and that's it. Right, so you say, what, $1,000 into this year, into the strategy or whatever else, you can do that. Down here, if you are trading an asset with staking, make sure that this is toggled on. This is because in the spot market, Solana or the Sol token doesn't pay staking rewards automatically. You actually have to go and stake the asset. What OKX are gonna do in this example is go ahead and stake the Sol for you and give you this OK Sol, which is a staking derivative. It just means that they've staked the Sol for you and they're earning the staking reward and passing it back to you. Now, you can also do that with other staking assets. So if you trade ETH as well, you should see that there's a box here that says, uh, you know, OK ETH or uh, staked ETH or whichever staking derivative, they've staked the ETH and they're passing the staking reward back to you. Something like Bitcoin won't have this because you can't stake it. Also, this toggle box here, uh, Boost Investment, what it's doing is borrowing some funds to go ahead and uh, carry out the trade for you, probably in this OK sell. Now, as long as the rate of borrow is below the staking reward that you're getting, then you're basically just creaming an arbitrage between the rate that you're paying on your borrow, your interest rate, and the amount you're getting in SOL as well. You can do that if you want. However, because interest rates are variable, that may again work out negative for you. So it's a risk of the trade. You can do it or not as you, as you wish. Let's turn this off for now. And we can see the next arbitrage profit from the futures market is this much. The estimated spot investment is this much and the futures investment is this much. What they're doing is taking this amount of money and they're automatically carrying out the trade for us, right? So the spot investment is this and in the futures market, they're using a bit of leverage to put less money down in the futures trade, even though the, the actual tr uh, trade size should be the same to net out uh, the, uh, the long side. If you borrow, as you can see here, what you're doing is borrowing more money and so the spot investment is higher and the futures investment is higher, even though they should cancel each other out. The only, uh, what, what you're doing here is putting in money into the future trade and using 10x leverage to make the trade size the exact same size as the spot investment. And so over the uh, time, because the trade size is bigger because you're borrowing money, you're obviously earning yield on a larger amount of money. Now you have exposure to the interest rate as well. So if you, if you don't wanna do that, and you wanna have you know, a little less risk, you can just take that boost investment off. That's it. They will create that for you with the amount that you wanna invest. Once that's created, that will start running. And the only risk that you have is that the funding rate, if that goes negative, you'll have to pay out. And the OKX, for example, staking, that's gonna be paid to you. Uh, that staking rate can also change, but it is a staking rate that you'll get. And you should be delta neutral in the trade. Once the uh, trade is active, that will be in your open bots. You can see that hopefully making money. If it starts losing money, you should get out the trade on the right hand side. It'll just say uh, close bot and it will sell all of the trade for you and return any cash to your account. No trade is risk free, of course. The risk here is that we have exposure to the funding rate, which can change and even go negative, which would be bad for our trade. Now, as long as it's mostly positive, we'll be okay, but we have to manage that. And if funding goes negative for extended periods, we have to consider getting out of the bot. Now, the other uh, risk here is just the opportunity cost. We're taking hopefully no price exposure and just earning the yield, which on Solana right now on OKX is 9%. That's 9% a year, which is fine, but in a bull market, crypto assets will go up a lot more than that. So the opportunity cost is that you're missing out on any potential upside, but there is still some potential downside from the funding rate flipping around. 
So be aware of that and make the decision if you want to go into this bot or not. That's up to you as the individual. I'll leave the link to OKX down below if you want a bonus when signing up and some other helpful videos down in the description as well. I'm James, this is my ZG. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.